reading my favorite book of 2021, and that is This Beautiful Truth by the lovely Sarah Clarkson. So thank you very much to uh, Baker Books for sending me this review copy, or rather, uh, I was lucky enough to be accepted to be a part of the launch team for this book, and they sent out to the first 200 people in the U.S. that applied to be a part of it, they sent out a free edition of This Beautiful Truth. And it was the most exciting day to receive this in the mail because I had finished it. I had finished reading my uh, e-copy of it on my phone a few days prior to that and had just been meditating on this book, digesting it, thinking about it, and how it was probably going to be my favorite book of the year. And um, just how much I was longing for this book um, and just thinking about like when with my fun money I would get it and it turned up in the mail. Um, so to receive, you know, a favorite book in the mail is very exciting indeed. And I went right ahead and got my um, embosser and put, you can't really see it on there, but it says this book belongs to Kate House. So I made sure to put that on there immediately. Um, I have felt very intimidated about doing a book review for this because I know I will not do this book justice. I will not convey things as beautifully or as lyrically or poignantly as they are in the book, but I just want people to know that you should read this book. So I thought I will put up this, this review video um, if it makes more people know about this book, even though I won't um, be able to, I don't know, put things as succinctly as I was hoping. I want this video to be out there. And um, I'm putting this video up on the release day of this book. It also has been such a treat, uh, you know, as part of experiencing reading this book to be a part of the launch team and be uh, hearing from other readers what they are thinking of the book. And also Sarah has done some live Q and A's and it's just been a really um, kind of all immersive reading experience. I have realized that I've taken, you know, this long into the video and I haven't even really told you what this book is about, but it is so unique that I have trouble just labeling it under the term memoir, but I think that's kind of the category that I would put it. It's a very personal story. Uh, Sarah's journey with mental health struggles and really intense mental health uh, struggles that began from the time she was 17 and it really shook her faith. Uh, the, the suffering was so deep and intense that it made her question, where is God in all of this? And there is so much struggling and grief and uh, wickedness that you see in the world and just the different ways that people can harm each other. And uh, just, it's hard sometimes to grapple with how this, um, Kind of interacts with our view of goodness and beauty. In this memoir though, she talks about the deep, deep struggles that she had and the thing that saved her was beauty. And who is the creator of beauty? God. God is the author of all beauty. And um, each chapter is kind of one little um, segment of her story, of her experience. Um, being just in really, really deep suffering and having to wade through that and seeing the different things that carried her through that time. And I will read, this is from the introduction. Uh, and Sarah says, my deep belief is that beauty has a story to tell. One that was meant by God to speak to us of his character and reality, meant to grip our failing hands with hope. We know God when we behold his beauty when his goodness invades the secret rooms of our hearts. To believe the truth that beauty tells, this is our great struggle from the depths of our grief. To trust the hope it teaches us to hunger toward, this is our fierce battle. To craft the world, it helps us to imagine, this is our creative, death-defying work. This book is the story of my battle to get my hands round beauty and to hold through it through all the great and changing grief I have known. This is the song of hope I sing from out of the midst of my own darkness. And the ways that she experiences beauty in this book um, 
in the midst of very intense suffering um, to the point, the, the suffering is to the point where it feels almost suffocating. That's how, how deeply she was uh, feeling um, the struggles that she was in. It's so moving and this book moved me to tears at so many points throughout it just to see this real contrast with being kind of in the depths of despair as Anne Shirley would put it and then seeing these beautiful moments that strike uh, and, and pierce through the darkness makes them all the more um, lovely and uh, refreshing and satiating. Uh, there is a real love of books in here and then I followed this book up by reading Sarah's other book. Um, she has a few books out but the book that came out before this one, Book Girl, and just to see uh, how books have meant so much to her uh, she just feels like such a kindred spirit and she really does share a lot of herself in this book and I think that's why it spoke to me so much. I know in some of the nonfiction and sort of memoir category books that I've attempted to read, if the author feels aloof, I'm immediately kind of disengaged with the book. But Sarah really does uh, make this book very personal um, and she doesn't cut corners while she's sharing this, these experiences that she had. And talking about beauty more, one of the quotes that she shared was from The Return of the King. There are many uh, mentions of the Lord of the Rings trilogy uh, by Tolkien and it made me so excited that I was already in the midst of a reread and so The Two Towers is one I'm hoping to read through this month. And the quote that she shared from the, the Return of the King was, Sam saw a white star twinkle for a while. The beauty of it smote his heart as he looked up out of the forsaken land and hope returned to him. For like a shaft, clear and cold, the thought pierced him that in the end the shadow was only a small and passing thing. There was light and high beauty forever beyond its reach. Being able to look and wade through, you know, the darkness that you're experiencing and seeing the light, I think is what is the key to uh, the experience that you see in this beautiful truth. And the ways that uh, art and food and hospitality, all of these things ministered to her, how um, her mom is Sally Clarkson, who is the host of the uh, at home with Sally podcast and she would say life-giving things. Um, it's beautiful to see the ways that they really ministered to her and I mean I underlined so much of this but another quote I will I will read from a chapter called This is the Broken Place is here was the argument and grace of the starlight that kept me from an act of desperation when I was 17. Here was the theodicy that made the sense of the strange moments of awed wondering beauty I'd known throughout my dark years of OCD. I called them simply my knowings, instance of beauty that caught me off guard and left me flushed with wonder. The lilt of a Celtic song as I sat on my bed would suddenly stir and astonish me. In its notes I could hear the healing of the world, or a line in a story that suddenly made me feel that the real saving of my mind and body would one day come, or a blazing sunset, the curve of a mountain, the touch of my mother, the grace of a friend. They spoke hope into my long darkness in a language without words. They left me with no apologetic, no theological statement, but the real sense of God's goodness they imparted to me was the single greatest reason I still clung to my faith. And then let's see, I will pick one more um, to read because another um, element that is in here is, you know, where is God in all the suffering? And as she unpacks it, as she goes through this, she, she really strongly uh, uh, demonstrates God is with us in our suffering. We are not alone. The only possible defense for God against the charge of making a world riddled with suffering and violence is that he didn't, writes my Oxford tutor, Michael Lloyd. Our origin is love, and we were intended for blessing, not destruction. The point of our struggle is not to gain some sort of spiritual grit or prove our endurance. We are not asked to become grim warriors in the face of pain. We are asked to be children who will not rest until they know themselves cradled in the arms of the Father who begot them for joy. The point of our wrestling is that God himself has arrived in the midst of our sorrow, a gracious Savior who gives himself into our desperate hands and teaches us what it means to grip the reality of our salvation, our restoration to glory. In God's hands, we wrestle toward hope. We fight our way onward to fresh belief. The mystery of suffering may be great, but God's location within our suffering isn't. 
He is here holding us as we suffer a broken world, tugging us forward toward the healing and surety we can find only in gracious hands. So many elements made this declare that this is my favorite book of 2021. We'll see if I'm proved wrong, but it was personal. It, she writes about her faith so beautifully. She writes about God being there in the suffering with us so beautifully and the ultimate suffering of Christ dying on the cross is um, written in such a meaningful and thoughtful way in this book. And also just um, delighting in beautiful things, delighting in what some people might think is rather simple, a beautiful bouquet of flowers or um, watching clouds in the sky as they blow by. It just made it um, uh, incredibly meaningful and restorative reading experience. I felt so encouraged um, in you know my chronic illness struggles that I am not alone in them. I'm not suffering on my own, and it's. Uh, I'm so glad this book is out in the world. So thank you, Sarah Clarkson, for writing this book, and thank you again to Baker Books for sending me this copy. I am looking forward to chatting with people in the comments who are intrigued about this book, and I'm hoping that I will be hearing from some of you that maybe will be reading it this summer or later on in the autumn or winter, and um, just really um, feeling, I'm hoping other people feel as encouraged by this book as I did. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.